at the end of the day, regardless what camera you have, what light you have, what mic you have, you're a storyteller. That's what creatives are. Whether you're telling it through a photo, through a video, we are storytellers. That's what we are at the end of the day. So the type of story that you're telling, you must tell me in a manner that I'm able to take it and then hold it and then being able to tell another person to say, actually, on Josh's video, I learned about this. And that is the impact that you measure yourself in mm. to say, hey, it's not about the numbers. It's about the people that are able to say, hey, man, I watched this. This is my takeaway. Welcome, welcome to the Creatorpreneur Show. And tonight we've got a guest, a guest of note, Bongani Baloyi, founder or co-founder of Defining Media, founder of Gigabytes <laughs> Production. Yes, sir. We're in multiple businesses. Mm -hmm. Class of 2022 YouTube Black. And the man behind all the fire content that you're seeing from the majority of SA's top content creators, Bongani Baloyi. Welcome to the Creatorpreneur Show. It's an absolute pleasure Thank having you, so you here, much. sir. Thank you so much. Eh? No. No. <laughs> Finally, I'm here. I hope that I did justice on the intro. <laughs> you did, hey, you did. I hope. You did. <laughs> awesome stuff. Thank you so much for making the time to come through and, and to chat with us. Um, so anyone who might be joining us for the first time, this is the Creative Entrepreneur Show. And essentially what we do on this show is we connect creators to to business through content and yeah that's what bogani has been doing and has been extremely successful in his endeavors and um, i've had the privilege of working with bongani for a while and we've worked <laughs> on some really cool stuff together and it's always been a good time and i've learned a lot from him um, but i thought you know what it's not just about me learning we need to be able to share to our community we need to be able to grow one another because by growing communities and by empowering one another we empower ourselves and that's the whole purpose of the creator platform. So when I was starting For these sure. creatorpreneur shows, one person that I knew I was going to definitely have on this show was Bongani because of just the amounts of information and knowledge that he's shared with me and how that's <laughs> progressed my career. I knew that anyone who's watching this is going to be able to extract so much value from this. So if you're someone who's watching, if you want to be able to participate in the conversation, if you want to be able to ask a question, Click on our link tree. I've pinned it here on YouTube. Um, if you are listening from somewhere else, it's www.linktr.ee slash creatorpreneur or creator community rather. And you'll see that there's a button there that can um, that will take you to a link where you can participate in the conversation. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can also just drop a comment in the chat and we'll be able to um, post any pic any questions that you may have for Bongani forward to him. And, and yeah, so... That being that, Bongani, it's an absolute pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Bongani was telling me that he's been on the grind there. He's been editing some stuff. I don't know what's what's cooking there. I know it's something special. <laughs> I like the hope. I like the faith that you have in me. <laughs> <laughs> the other day you were on Times Square's Boulevard. Like, come on. I know that there's something saucy that you're working on there. <laughs> I think one, one thing that's very lovely is like we get to walk through this journey with the people that we love, like the friends, the family, like everyone is supporting now. You know, when you're a creator starting from the bottom, no one has faith in you. No one has like, like everyone is on that level of saying, Hey, is this guy going to make it? Like, what are you doing? Like when content creation started, mm. I remember my first time when I saw YouTube, uh, it was literally 2014 and I was like, what on earth is YouTube? And I started mingling around and then I gained interest over it. And when YouTube started evolving and then when I took it seriously, people were like, ah, we, we don't live in that. We're not in America, we're in South Africa. So what are you talking about? And it was very hard to even like just venture into that content creation on the YouTube space, it's very difficult to like position yourself when like, you know, when you're starting out, uh, friends mm. won't support you, family won't support you until eventually they see the results. So when you're starting out, it's very difficult to like pull through, climb the ladder a bit by bit. So now 
when you are on Times Square and they see your face, it's like, it's, it's, it's one of those things. It's, like, it's official, it's like, official now. Exactly. <laughs> Yo, we were actually, it's, I, I'm glad that you brought that up because my first question to you was going to be, how did your journey start? And, <laughs> and we'll get into that. We'll get into that. But yeah. I just wanted to drop a quick anecdote from my side before we do that. Um, we were doing okay. a creator cast, the first creator cast episode. Uh, two weeks back, right? And we were yeah. talking about our experiences as being creators and something that a lot of us go through as creators. And I wouldn't even just say that it's limited to creators now that I'm thinking about it. I think a lot of people that go into the entrepreneurial space also experience that. But when you have That's a it. grand idea in your head and you try to share with people, with people it's, it's very difficult to get that across, right? A much better way to get people to believe in your idea is to not just tell them, but to show them. And that's what exactly. you guys do on a consistent basis. And that's what I love about <laughs> following you guys is you're always showing people what you're working on. <laughs> and like, whether it be on your social media or whether it be just the work that you're putting out on a consistent basis, people can always see now nah, these guys are always pumping stuff out and doing the most. So yeah, that's just like one thing that I like, I think is super important when it comes to anything, right? Don't just tell people about your idea, show them because that's where most people will flop or, or fall short is they will, they won't be able to implement the idea. And that's where the tricky part comes in. But yeah, shout out to you guys for, for constantly being a great example in terms of like showing people what you guys are up to. But Bogani, like coming back to that question, right? Where did your yeah. journey start? And through like where your journey started, I'm very curious to find out what was your first ever YouTube video uploaded and what, what you shot, how it came out. Is it even online still? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I think, you know what, man? I, I first started to discover, like, as, as I mentioned, like in 2014. And funny enough, in 2014, the first thing that I put out on YouTube was a mix. It was literally a mix. I was mixing like my soundtracks there and then I put it up on YouTube and it was there. Like, I think it was on a thousand views. I was like, Hey, where are this thousand people coming from now? What's in the mix? Cause that time I was like, you know, when you're playing around with virtual DJ and like, I started visual DJ and then the next thing was the audio part of it because I was playing with <laughs> the visualizers, the different things. So I put up the whole mix and I was putting like things, visualizers there and there and there. That's when I learned about copyright strike. There was some video <laughs> that was like, in the middle, there was a copyright strike that was like, flip, so what do I do in this case? Cause it's part of the mix, it's a song. And like, that was my first video ever. And I think the most important one was the actual video that we put out was with Zanele and that was in 20, I think 16. So from 2014, I kept on pushing the mixes, deleting because of copyright, but trying to put in there and there. But then when I started like the actual content creation, I think it was in 2016. That's when we like decided to go into the YouTube space with Zanele Potelo. And we've been working on projects before for Tax of Fame, right? So after the whole mixing thing, I took the stuff and they're like, text of him, listen, this is, this is the stuff. Like, this is the new thing. You put your stuff on YouTube. There's a thousand people who are watching on my channel. So imagine what, how many views can we get on text of him? They were like, listen, let's jump on it. And then they jumped on it. And then I was recording interviews of artists coming through. That's where we got to meet your pretty ugly, Bonte, and your double HP, your Stilo Makolite. So all those cool guys, we, we shot interviews and then we put them on the Tax FM's uh, YouTube page. So that's when I was like, okay, cool. This is something that's actually working. And then when I got to Zanella, Zanella was training, like she's so, so fascinated about presenting and she wanted to do uh Inside a Presenter Search. And <laughs> it was so exciting to do it because she came to me. She was like, yeah, no, dude, I feel like you're the right person to train me for this presenter such thing. That time I'm studying financial science. I have this pair, uh, camera. It was a power shot Nikon. I'll never forget. Oh, the crap. Power shot. <laughs> <laughs> shot the pair you were team then... Nikon. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I would have never have guessed that. Hey, team Nikon. Humble Yo. beginnings. <laughs> and the, the power shot. Thing is, the power shot was good at that time. You know, when you don't know what's out there. 
People keep mm. kept on telling me about DSLR, but because I'm studying financial science, all, all I know is your auditing, your accounting. I didn't know any of the mm. stuff. So that's when I think the managers at TaxFM started to say, listen, I think you should like start investing your time into this and actually like doing it professionally. And then from there, I started YouTube. I studied YouTube like as much as I had class, I had YouTube to study. I was going to, mm. YouTube to say how to upload a video how to make a video go viral on YouTube. So those basic things I started there. That's when I started building up. No, nah, that's amazing, bro. Like there were a few like things that you mentioned there that I think are like super important. Right. And the first one yeah. that comes to mind is what you just mentioned now with YouTube, bro. Like yeah. so many people don't understand how much information there is on YouTube. They'll look at someone like you oh. and me, right? Because I also do. I was studying BCom Information Systems and Economics, what? right? When I was in university, <laughs> that's what I studied, right? And then people are always like, like the people that I was studying with would never understand me. Like yeah. I would always be that person that's an outsider because I'd always be in Bramfontein shooting fashion films on the weekends. We'd always be going yeah. to shout out to Moy House for sponsoring us mm. these thrift clothes that we used to like <laughs> dress up in and go around Bramfontein and do all these fashion shoots in like, but I had the same experience, right? A lot of the skills yeah. that we developed over these years didn't come from a, like formal education. It came from yeah. online tutorials. And the thing is like, the beauty of that, right? What's so amazing mm -hmm. about that. And what I always tell people, whenever I come across people that are looking for opportunities and that are yeah. in places where they're not really happy is you have so much access to resources online and it's all free. Like it's, there's that's so true. much of it that's free. <laughs> the only challenge yeah. then becomes is finding the right thing. Right. And that's where like the whole that's concept true. of content curation comes into it, but there's so yeah. much knowledge available online. Right. Um, exactly. and a lot of people don't understand the power of that. And I think just having you share your story is a testament to like how much like knowledge and how much value you can extract from just going online and just Googling like whatever problem you have to solve. Um, exactly. So that's, yeah, no, that's amazing. And like the fact that <laughs> something that's also super important is like you and Zanele, right? So any, if anyone's yeah. watching and they don't know Zanele, Zanele is what? a radio presenter, right? Uh, she's on five yeah. FM if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And um, yeah, she's phenomenal, phenomenal at what she does, <laughs> like hosting, being a DJ, all that stuff. Yo, dude, talking about being a DJ, bro. I can't believe, dude, you know, I was also a DJ. <laughs> There's oh. common threads here, bro. There's common threads, dude. Like, do you remember, do you remember, um, Soul Candy by any chance? Listen, I, on, 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 I had a CD pack, right? On my, on my uh. CD pack, I had Soul Candy 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That was like my go-to CD. Like, I knew every single thing. You know what's inside <laughs> Soul Candy? I would even, on the CD, Soul Candy 1, I would write out the check number 1, check number 2, check number 3. Oh my goodness. I still remember yeah. this is like those were my go to checks all the time. Yo, Bro, my specialty. So, <laughs> you know what I love about this show is like yeah. just learning <laughs> people's backgrounds and learning more about them. Because like, yeah. dude, I would have never have guessed that. Um and just to like <laughs> give you some insight of my background, that's why I learned to DJ was with Soul Candy. They used to have DJing lessons there at their head offices with Clive Bean. Shout know. out to Clive yeah. Bean. Um but yeah, no, that's crazy. Um but it just shows you like when you when you're in the creative space that Yo, that passion within you will continuously call your name. Like if you exactly. are studying accounting, whatever you're doing, that instinct, that passion mm. will always be there and will always burn. But uh, some people, hey, what I want to do through this content that we're putting mm -hmm. out is to inspire people to follow that because that passion sure. is something that's like, I feel like is something that's essential for me, right? Mm -hmm. But I know that... Mm -hmm. Like for you, you might have something that you feel is different, right? A lot of people who are watching this know you from mm -hmm. Defining Media. They know the content that you've been putting out with all these different publics, uh, public figures. And also <laughs> you being a part of YouTube Black Class of 2022. Congratulations, by the way. That's an enormous achievement. Thank you so much. <laughs> but coming to the whole Defining YouTube channel. Right. And we've, yeah. we've learned a little bit about like where you started. And I think 
from my perspective, it seems as though where things really started to heat up a lot for you and, and what was sort of like a pivot in your career was the success yeah. of the defining YouTube channel. So I wanted to find okay. out from you, like you did mention a little bit about how you would work with Sanele. Um, I know Dennis is someone who who's very in, involved in the defining YouTube channel and then also Noma. Yeah. So I want to find out from you, like, where did you guys meet? <laughs> like, how did that whole, how did that like trio you know how did that trio get formed and how did that all of that start whose idea was it was it everyone's like like tell me more i want to know the people want to know <laughs> <laughs> the, the nice thing about life it's like it's a circle like it never ceases to amaze you every single time so right so by the time we were training zanele from zanti inside i had like a couple of guests there and it turned out that one of the guests was dennis ngango and he, he was coming in to be interviewed and on, on the YouTube show. And I don't think like the footage ever came out. I remember the footage was just for Zanette to practice and all that. And I kept on doing this stupid things on her, like trying to practice the in-ear situation to say, hey, Zanella changed from camera one to camera two. Like just those quick things. <laughs> and then when things came along and he was like, listen, this guy, who are you? And let's, let's, let's work together. I was like, listen, what do you mean work together? What do you do? Like, yeah, no, I have my own YouTube channel. It's called Defining Dennis. And he was like, no, I have an interview with DJ Fresh and I would like a videographer to come through. I'm like, DJ Fresh? Hmm. I've always okay. wanted to meet that guy. Listen, let's make it work. And then the interview never happened. But the amazing thing is that Russell Simone from the U.S., was the first guest that we shot. And then from there, from Russell Simone, we started to shoot Caspar Vest, And then it developed to a thing it was like, actually, let's make this thing. And then so it became Defining Dennis until, until 2017. 2017, I think that was the biggest turnaround. And like 2017, I remember Dennis saying like, hey man, like we've got this thing, we're on like a thousand subscribers and then it's like now it was evolving around Dennis at that time. It was like, no, man, I feel like we can share this with a lot of more people than just me involved, like evolving around my life. Like, I feel like there's more to this channel than what it is. I was like, I feel you, but what could be, what could be the next thing that we do? And then we had all the people like chipping in on defining. And then eventually there was Norma. Norma was a big fan of defining at that time. So Norma was going to church with Dennis. And then Dennis, and then Norma approached Dennis and then they became friends eventually. And then they brought Norma on the set. I remember the first video was politics. I was not there on the shoot. And then <clears throat> the second one was on closer to Valentine's day. That's when I officially met Norma. She was there on time. Dennis was late and <laughs> Norma was like running things. And I'm like, this girl, like she's, she's She's got like this driving producer, thing, my like, producer. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, mm, we definitely need someone like this. And then Dennis was like, she, she's perfect. Like she she fits everything. Like because now, as much as there's two guys, two guys sometimes like we have a lot in common in terms of like different backgrounds. When we come together, like we make things work. But we need a, a woman who can say we're not just gonna make things work. We're gonna tell stories. And then that's when defining love what came into picture. We were supposed to do a video that a one minute video. We invited all these cool couples to come through. I was one of the couple that came through, and I was hey, like, a veteran. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then we we developed the whole thing of like, yeah, this is the one minute video. But after that, we sat down because that was the, the first time meeting the three of us, and we sat down and we were actually discussing how was the shoot, you know. And we still even do that today, like try to like uh, analyze whether what was the shoot fruitful, did we get the right content, did we actually come out with what we want, right? And then mm. what we discovered is that there was a, a polyamorous couple that was there. And when we sat down, we were like, that's a very interesting couple. I actually want to learn more about it because that was the first time even hearing the word polyamorous. I'm like, what mm. the heck is polyamorous? Mm. Yeah, but even going to Google at that time, like, oh, flip, wait. So does that mean they're in an open relationship situation? Wait, how does even, like, how does the whole thing work? Do you understand? 
And at that mm. time, you're asking not to judge, you're asking to learn about this mm. kind of relationship. And that's where the whole defining love began, like learning about all these different relationships without uh, judging, but learning from the story that people are telling to say, hey, I've got this love and it's my love. And that's how I define love. That's why like, we can never say, hey, what is your definition of love? The fact that you've seen that story, like that, that is love right there. That's what you see at that time. That's how people define their love. And we are not there to judge. We're there to tell the story, to say, there's people who define love like this. Unlike me, I mean, I have my own way of defining love. There's someone out there who believes in uh, polyamorous relationship. There's people who believe in multiple partners. It's still their way of the, how they define love. That's how it works. And that's why the whole thing was so interesting. And that's why it became what it is. Bongani, like okay. that story is a beautiful story. And I think you really touched on a lot about what the essence of defining is, what's the purpose, what's the meaning. And for yeah. me, when it comes to content, right? When it comes to content, there's few aspects that you can like hit on with content that makes something valuable sure. to watch, right? And I think nowadays in the content space, because everyone many people have access to be putting contents online, right? Everyone has a phone, everyone has yeah, a camera on sure. that phone. And if you have that resource at your disposal, you can like shoot something today and put it online. So the barrier to entry is like so low. So what <laughs> we're starting to see now is we're seeing a lot of people putting out content, but what a lot of people haven't learned yet. And I think this is what you guys cracked in terms of your content is that yeah. you need to offer value through your content, right? And for Imagine. me, there's three ways. There's three ways to offer value. Mm -hmm. The first one is to entertain. The second one is to inspire. Mm -hmm. And the third one is to uh -huh. educate. And to be honest mm. with you, I think you guys hit on all three of those through your defining YouTube channel, because the experience oh. of watching your videos, you will leave feeling educated. And you mentioned it now, you will leave feeling inspired because right. you've seen the success <laughs> of these relationships. And it's such a beautiful story to hear. And lastly, you will leave learning or being motivated, inspired and educated. Um, so there's so much value that comes from the content that you guys are putting out. And I think that's like what you guys are doing so well through everything that you work on. And that's, that's amazing. I see we've got defining in the building. I don't know if it's Dennis or if it's Noma, <laughs> but shout out. Thank you for coming through. Hungwani, thank you so much for coming through. It's an absolute pleasure having you guys here. If you are watching this and you have any questions, please, you're welcome to ask them in the channel, um, in the chat on YouTube. And if you're watching on a different platform, you can go to our link tree. It should be linked on whatever platform you're watching on. And you'll be able to join the Discord and ask your question in the Discord if you want to participate in the conversation. But shout out for everyone who's here and for coming through. Yo, can I just say something as well? Like, yeah. the, like something that's so, <laughs> that really resonates with me from what you said is like, if you want to achieve something great, if you want to go far, right? If you don't want to go somewhere fast, but you want to go somewhere far, you need to go with a group. You need to go with a team. There's strength in numbers. And when you're able to work with people who are able to fill in the gaps of where you might have certain weaknesses with their strengths, you can achieve so much more. And I think that's also what's so beautiful about what you mentioned with the defining story is like Dennis was late, but Noma was early. So it's like that balances it out, right? And then Dennis has some sort of strength that Norma might not have a strength and then that will balance it out, you know? So exactly. that's super important when it comes to anything is being able to work with people. And that's something that I've like struggled to learn. I don't know if it's because I'm an only child <laughs> or what it was, but for me, I've been very independent my entire life. And through seeing you guys and what you're doing and through my own experiences of um, starting JD Creations and working on the creator community, something that I'm learning and that I'm slowly becoming better and better at is becoming a team player, being someone that works with other people and also brings out the best in other people. I think that's also super important. Okay. And from my experience of working with you, I think that's also something that you do so well, Bongani. Whenever you're on a set <laughs> and you're directing someone, you bring out the best in that person, right? And I think that's for me, that's like a secret source that you've managed to get in terms of your content. But in terms of the other content out there, right? Um, whether it be yeah. defining, 
whether it be like you work with a whole bunch of influencers and you're constantly putting out <laughs> stories on multiple different platforms, whatever content yeah. you're putting out there, what would you say is your secret sauce to make sure that that content offers the most possible value out there or achieves whatever goal you're setting out to achieve? That's a, that's a nice question. Hey, that's a nice question. I, I, I love <laughs> it when one thing for sure is that when a person comes to me, uh, that the first thing that I would say is that people must come with an open mind. That's the first thing that when you go and work with someone else, you're not going there to be a dictator. You're going there to put your mind and then like sort of like to collaborate. That's the best thing that I always do is that, for example, I, 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 I know my creators most of the time and I would understand their weaknesses. I would understand what they're afraid of and what they need help. And for example, now, when a person is coming to me for a, like, let's say now the YouTube, let's say, for example, I have Nozibele Mayara. She's a very great YouTuber. And whenever there's an ad involved and she needs like creative direction, she will tell, she will tell me like, listen, as much as I do my own content, I need creative direction on this. And you quote me on creative direction also. And also this, like they understand the level of like communication that needs to be clear because now the first thing is knowing each other's weaknesses because that's the best thing ever you be able to protect one another for example with me i know most of the time when we are there as a defining team i know they've got my back and i know that i can say something they'll always have me have my back regardless so you know that when it comes to collaboration the best thing is that you sit down as a team and then you know each other's weaknesses and it becomes the best thing because now when you start shooting content, it becomes easier to say, hey, I, I know you're not best in terms of presenting, but you are best when it comes to dancing. And it becomes a skill that you develop over time to understand what is the best, uh, what you call best skill to apply whenever someone comes to you and you'll know this person can shoot like proper skills. So give them the opportunity to excel in what they like do. You can't say a person now comes to you and say, hey, man, I want to shoot skills the next thing they're doing video. That means you're setting them up for failure. So it's more on understanding what the type of person you're working with. That's the first thing. Then the second thing, I think mainly, uh, I think establishing boundaries, as much as it might sound like it's not like a good thing, but it's one of the, one of the best things that I've learned to sort of like uh, grow within this space. Because now, as much as you, you, you're able to say, uh, Bongani, you are my videographer. There's certain elements that I need to allow the person who I'm working with to do their best. If the person for that day has been allocated to be the producer, I can't mingle in their business to say, hey man, like I think you should be producing this way, you should be doing that way. You need to trust your teammates. You need to trust your team to say, hey, listen, I respect your boundary at this moment. And if you want your stuff like this, you know the final product. As much as I might not like get it at that time, and I know very well with creators that be, the biggest problem is not seeing the final product. I might have this big idea, but the secondary person might not seeing this idea. So I have to follow through that idea and being able to understand this is my boundary. This is where I'm at at this moment. So it makes it easy to say, hey, listen, uh, as much as there's this, I love to do this. But here's a boundary. Bongani, you're the day OP at this moment, or Bongani, you're the producer, or Bongani, you're the photographer. As long as we know how to respect those boundaries, it's much easier. And then the third thing I would say, keep everything authentic. Uh, as much as like we'd like to be this lavish uh, team, if there's a problem and you, you, you don't like on how I do things or I'm late on delivery, you'd have to tell me, hey, Bongani, you know on how we are as creatives. I'm supposed to deliver a video at 6 p.m. Then 6 p.m. passes, I haven't delivered. That's the thing. We need to communicate that to say, hey, Bongani, 6 o'clock, what's going on? Like, we need to be clear. So that's the thing about creative. Uh, there's the, the, that professionalism needs to be the umbrella. Besides now, everything what's going on, that friendship develops over time for sure. But that professionalism still needs to be there. The thing that I like about also, sorry, I, I'll keep on mentioning Zanella because I like on how like everything has sort of like revolved around everything. And uh, the way she's built this, it's like we are able to separate friendship and work all the time. It's like when mm -hmm. it's time for friendship, it's time for friendship. When it's time to work, it's time to work. So the same thing with defining is that we're able to say, hey guys, this is time for fun. This is time to 
work. So like it, it works in, in, in sort of like all corners and then that whole umbrella of professionalism summarizes everything and you're able to work properly. Yeah, I think when it comes to working with so many people on these projects, you have to have yeah. like essential communication. That's key exactly. to be able to. And what what brings up what communication brings about is a sense of understanding, right? And expectation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think that's super important, right? People know exactly what is expected of them, and if they are struggling, then it's their responsibility to be able to ask or to like get support in that area and be able to communicate. Look, guys. <laughs> Like, I know that I'm the DOP, but I need someone to help me move this light. So I need someone to help me with exactly. this or with that. And when you're able to all work together in that sense, um, when you're all like targeted to one, one specific goal, that's when you start seeing things like defining and the other projects that you're working on start coming to fruition because then everyone yeah. is in alignment, everyone's in communication with one another. And everyone um, knows that after we can go have fun and like we can go chill and be friends. But right now, exactly. right now is the time to focus on our goal and to achieve it. Now, that's great. Like that's ultimately what you're talking on is leadership skills. And I think that's something that takes a while to develop, you know, and can be quite challenging sure. uh, to develop. And, and, I, and I think it's also important to like to consider that not everyone needs to be a leader, right? Some people... Uh, like when you're looking at a team, if everyone's going to be a leader, then it's not going to be a successful shoot because everyone's, there's going to be too many cooks in the kitchen. Like sometimes you need one person to kind of bring everyone together. And I think maybe that's, maybe that's more of your role in terms of what you guys are doing. But I think um, a lot of people always want to be the leader, but it's like, no, you can still have a huge <laughs> impact in this project without necessarily taking that role of a leader. Um, even like you can even learn how to be a leader from just like being able to work under a team with someone who's a great leader. <laughs> <laughs> so Bongani, you like, I'm going to like right now, I think we went a little bit in terms of like the actual shooting process. Right. Um, but I know that a lot of people who are watching this are people that might have their own YouTube channel that they've started and they are trying to grow on the channel. There might be people that are watching that have started a YouTube channel a while back and managed to grow it to a certain point. Let's say, I don't know, whatever growth could be to you. Let's say 5,000 people, let's say 2,000 people, let's say 300 people, however <laughs> many it may be. I think a lot yeah. of the questions that those people have and those creators have is how do you, grow, number one, grow your YouTube channel? What is like, yeah. what tips could you give someone who is watching who might want to grow their YouTube channel? And then the, I think, after that, like, cause growing, it's one thing, right? Growing a channel to 10,000 yeah. subscribers or whatever it may be is one thing, but yeah. you'll find a lot of people that have big YouTube channels, but they not, they find it very difficult to sustain themselves because when it comes to monetization numbers nowadays, when it comes to YouTube numbers, doesn't necessarily equate money. Just like yeah. there's certain ways <laughs> and methods true. that you can apply that can help maximize your return and help you get to the point where you're self-sustaining. And I think that's kind of like the Holy grail for creators, right? We want to be creating stuff yeah. that means something to us, but be able to like sustain ourselves doing it. Right. And a lot of people, yeah. they like, they succeed so well in terms of developing the content, putting their passion into purpose and being able to create the content that offers value. But where a lot of people fall short, especially in the creator space is the business and entrepreneurial side. And that's ultimately why we started this podcast and why it's called the Creatorpreneurs to connect those two spheres. And that's something that you guys have done really well. So uh, just to come back to the question, like, I think maybe we could start off with how do you number one, grow your YouTube channel. And then once you've managed to succeed in that, how do you monetize it? Like, how do you make it sustainable for you? Okay. So, uh, I think for me, <clears throat> I've always said this, that by the end of this year, I, I literally want to be a YouTube master and <clears throat> I, I, I enjoy YouTube because that's the only platform that will pay you for creating content. And that's the nice thing about it is that the more people create content, the better, the more uh, advertisers are going to start like tuning into YouTube and all that. So the growth is literally like massive. And so for people who are still starting out, I think the first thing that we need to lay on is the foundation is that 
before you even think about the growth, before you even think about the money of it, number one, are you doing something that you love? Because I have a problem with people that when we start talking about growth, you get to a point where now you burn out and then you don't know what type of content should you do going forward. And now you start burning out and then you want breaks. You, you don't want to do YouTube anymore. Then the next thing, I'm leaving YouTube. You're doing a video, I'm leaving YouTube and all that. So it's very tricky sometimes to like uh, advise someone who doesn't lay the foundation on, like who doesn't lay the correct foundation. So the first thing is that do something that you love. That's number one. That's key. Like before we get into the business side of it, before we get into the growth of it, before we get to the algorithms and all those things, that like you need to lay your foundation on the right thing. Because if you do something that you love, regardless, you don't do something because people want to. You know, sometimes I, I always tell my friends that you know what, if I ever wanted to do a YouTube channel, I could do a YouTube channel that will trend for days. All I have to do is just speak crap about people. All I have to do is just like. <laughs> Do whatever Drama. that's been made in other people. <laughs> exactly. It's like there's a lot of things to grow. But the nice thing is that if you're doing what you love, if you laid the foundation correctly, you will you will have a smooth road. Like you will enjoy the growth. Like once you get to the top, you won't say, Ish, okay, what do I do now since I'm at the top? So that's the first thing. The second do, thing Do you think so get... sorry for interrupting you, Bogani? I oh, just sure. wanted to ask. Yeah. So with what you're saying is like you need to lay that solid foundation. Do you think that yeah. like from what you're saying, would you say that what if because the way I'm understanding it is like this kind of thing is a marathon. It's not a yeah. thing that you do one month and then next <laughs> month you 10 million subscribers, exactly. your life changed. Like you do get some people out there who like go viral, but the percentage yes. of that is very small, right? So for majority of people, yeah. it's a long term game. And if you're going to want to like make it sustainable, just like with any other business, any entrepreneur who started a business can tell you it's a long-term game. Exactly. So I think when you're starting that out, you want to make sure that foundation is so solid because you want to build something ginormous on this thing. And if that foundation is not there, it's going to fall apart. And I think where a lot of creatives fall apart is the consistency, right? Because that's the key exactly. to long-term success is to be consistently putting out stuff. So I think, would you say that when it comes to being consistent, the key to one of the keys to success when it comes to being consistent is being able to do something that you're passionate about. And it, like, it can't be something that you love this month and then next month, you know, you don't love it anymore. It must be something that's been with you for a while, right? Exactly. So the thing is, Nate, it will take you two to three years to break even when it comes to your YouTube channel. I don't think anyone, as much as you might be a breakout at the beginning, once you lay the foundation, you know, just prepare your mind mentally that a, a YouTube channel is not something that's going to like flourish overnight. Even people who flourish overnight, I've seen there's a lady who does content on Caravan. She blew up. She went to 2 million subscribers within a month and then 20, mm. 000, 20 million views within like uh, the whole space of two months. And then she blew up. But now the content, it's like lacking. Like she's there and then she expected this whole thing to blow up. But now when it comes to like doing content, she's been speaking on like, Hey man, I don't know what content should I do anymore? Cause I've given you everything that I've like wanted and all that. So now when you lay your foundation on that two to three years, the consistency needs to be there. All those videos, even if you have one view, it's still something because the thing is being prepared is the best thing ever because now. The moment you start doing videos, you'll see it will improve over time. You'll actually understand that, you know what, when you put down the camera, when you decide to say, actually, I could put it this way, this lighting could be proper, and you improve over time. It grows over time to say, hey, I've laid my foundation, I'm doing the content that I love, and this growth, I'll, uh, Dennis likes to say, honor the season that you're in. Man, that's just the mm. best code ever. So now, when you in that season of like growth, you need to respect that. You know what? As much as there might be like two or 35 people there, those people are still there. If they were sitting in front of you, listening to you, that will be also like a great thing. So you should imagine these people, not just as numbers, but imagine as actual people. We like to say on defining, Hey man, like with 150,000 subscribers, we're filling up FNB stadium. Imagine those people that are going to be there just listening to us or our content. That's like a lot of people. So you should respect yeah. the thing of saying, even if it's 30 people, 30 people that the amount of people can, who can fill up a class. So 
already with the growth, you should just imagine that those people are there to listen to your content, regardless whether they are friends or not. So that would be the first step of growth. The second one, when it comes to that, is making sure that you deliver content on a consistent basis, on a, cons uh, a consistent time. If you say, I'm dropping every video like you, Josh, you know you're dropping your live streams on Monday at six o'clock. If you're keeping that consistent, people will know that this is not a a math and science a class where now you're gonna figure have to figure out. I know now at this moment that on Sunday on Metro FM there's gospel playing. I already know, like mm. I've channeled that in my mind. I, I know that on Saturday most of the radio stations are playing music. So people need to tune that in their mind that on Mondays there's a live stream that Josh is doing. You're creating this thing on people's mind that on Mondays they should just tune in to your YouTube channel so that they know that you're consistent. They're not going to get there. At six o'clock, there is no video. They will know that there's something. So it keeps people entertained. And now you bring one person and then the next person is coming through. So it grows. It becomes a pyramid where people are constantly coming through to check out. Oh, this is what's going on. Oh, flip. This is cool. Oh, wow. Actually, I would like to be on this channel. So that's how it grows. It grows organically. It doesn't grow through saying, oh, okay, cool. I'm going to manipulate this. Listen, there's thousands of ways of manipulating YouTube. You can literally, right now, when you're about to publish a video, I get someone else's video, I copy the title, I put it exactly like that. Bam! When people search the YouTube channel of whoever's like Peter McKinnon, when he drops the video, I put the same thing. People are going to think that's Peter McKinnon's video. They want to click on it and watch, and they're not going to find the content. So those people are going to obviously gain a couple of subscribers, but initially they're not going to last. So the moment you grow mm -hmm. organically all the time, people will understand that they're coming there for you. You will have a community. That's why I love YouTube so much is that it's not like Twitter, your Instagram. You have a community of people that are forever going to have your back. You know that these people are there to support you each and every step. It's like, that's what I'm like, when you're speaking numbers, think about physical people, think about the people that are there to say, at this moment, we have a responsibility of hundred and close to 160,000 people are going to be watching on Defining and we need to put our content on that. And when you think about that, like think about the amount of people who are going to be at the stadium, just waiting for that one video or that one Defining Love to drop. That alone it's a lot of things and the thing is if you've grown with these people from the get-go they'll forever have your back they'll know they'll appreciate the little things to say hey man i see the quality change in your videos if you check the very first defining love and then you check now you will see that the level of growth that is there and i love when people tell tell me those things to say hey man like on the latest defining love video i you guys like upscale like you change that and those are the little comments that make you want to appreciate it. So as much as there's that, the third part is the quality. Let me, let me get into what people really want most of the time. The mm. People are forever asking me, what camera should I buy? What mic should I buy? Should I buy this kind of light? How much are lights? How much is a camera, a basic camera? I'm like, all those things are expensive. And as much as you want to put out quality, it's best to use what you have. So this is like a cross board. For example, with me, one thing on, on TikTok and Instagram is that uh, I know I can't dance. I know I can't do all those fancy things. But one thing I do have is a drone. I was like, this is an advantage. I have it. I don't have to go buy it. I have it. I can make use of it. So the same thing is that people have a lot of things that they can use at their disposal. Like you've got a story where you are. You've got connections, Josh. You can invite me to your channel. That's like what you have at this moment. You don't need to uh, pay a thousand rand or two million just to invite me. It's things that are at your disposal. So you need to make sure that mm. you use everything that's at your disposal. Even if you've got a phone, the fact that it's there, I think I remember on one live stream, we did a tutorial on how to use your phone. And a lot of people have been giving me positive feedback to say, hey man, I didn't know my phone could do this. I didn't know that my phone can capture sound. A simple thing on, and defining is that I remember when we were using the phone, just putting it there in front of people and recording. That's audio mm. on its own. And you don't have to buy the road mics that people use. Like I know, like for example, the road mics alone, they're going to cost you 7,000 rand already. And you don't need that at the beginning. All you have to do is literally make use of what you have. Initially, what's on your disposal? On your disposal. And then the third thing, I think 
is it the third or fourth thing? I can't keep counting. Fourth. But anyway, yeah, the fourth thing. We, we got to go up to number 100. <laughs> the, the fourth thing, I think, when it comes to the editing, uh, as much as you might be able to say, hey, man, I've gotten the... The, the courage now to put on the camera. I want to start speaking about comedian or I want to start speaking about, let's say, for example, now, Josh, like one of that, there's so many ideas that you can think about. Let's say, for example, now we're creating a YouTube channel, right? We can gather four of our friends, sit down, and then we're going to talk about uh, whatever that's trending on Netflix, whatever that's trending on Showmax, whatever that's trending on Amazon, whatever that's trending on commercial TV. So all hmm. those ideas, they are there. And then we could sit down and then talk about that. I know people would love that. I know people who literally, like, I know my wife literally watches TV like four hours a day watching those shows. <laughs> and I know she would love the commentary on that. So let's take that as an example. You're taking your friends. You're not hiring out people. You're making sure that those shows, they're forever going to be there. Every week, there's a show that's playing. It's content that's sustainable. You don't need to mm. go and now create your own... Uh, uh, what you call tunnel and all that now you start you do you understand it's like yeah things that you could it's an idea that's there that doesn't need other people now when it comes to that you need to put in the editing that is like the crucial part now is that whatever that you put in it must be on a lifespan of how you would watch it you cannot now when i say if you're doing let's say for example a vlog if you're doing a vlog you don't want to put in a video of someone showing us that you are traveling for three minutes. Is you showing us the road? That doesn't make yeah. sense. You need to tell a story in less than 10 minutes. An average, uh, what you call concentration span of a person, that's seven minutes. So now when mm. you want to do a vlog, you must consider those things that you, you're not there to tell the story to yourself. Tell people a story in a manner that's very like conventional, where you Engaging. Able to say, "Hey, man, I went from there. I went from here to there." So you're able to account to say, "This is the amount of time that." Listen, ten minutes. I was able to tell you the whole story. It's like almost the same thing as practicing for an elevator pitch. You have literally thirty seconds to tell us what your YouTube channel is about. That's the very same thing that happens on your intro. Is that your, your intro is your elevator pitch? Hey guys, mm. my name is Bongani, I'm an African guy, a risk taker, a believer, a successful nation, a dreamer by night and a cheer by day. Period. Today on my YouTube channel, we're gonna be discussing how to vlog. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna be traveling to to China and then I'm gonna be giving you guys a breakdown on what type of um flights are cheap to get and all that. On that 30 seconds, you've told me everything that I need to know about this video that's there that's your elevator pitch so on your editing you know that 30 seconds it's there to grab people to tell them what the video is about and then what's going on and then you go to your montage if you have one your intro and then you start breaking down exactly what's going on to say hey if you're gonna be vlogging what does your vlog consist of? Your vlog consists of, I want to go, I'll show you guys today on my room. And then you give us your why. Why are you telling us about this? Because, oh, it's a special day. That's why I'm vlogging this one. We're going to uh, KZN. I'm going to be, it's going to be my first time. So you start breaking down everything in terms of that. And then giving us a bit of a taste of what it looks like, the look and feel and all that. So that's your breaking down in terms of like editing a, video, a YouTube video. So it sort of gives us, a niche of what you want to mm. be uh, describing throughout the vlog. Already from that, on your editing, you put it together. It's literally when it comes to editing, I'm not talking about the hectic things in terms of the transitions and all that. It's literally you showing us what we need to hear at that time. By the Story. end of the seven minutes, I'm able to say, hey, why am I not subscribed to this channel? Do you understand? Mm. So if, if people want more, I wouldn't recommend for people who are still starting out to do like videos that are more than like 15 minutes or so. Cause now mm. I don't have the concentration span to be watching someone that I don't know. So as much as yeah. you might be good, you might be talented and all that, it gets over time when now people start understanding, like, listen, we want more, we want more of this and all that. And then it makes sense. Unless your channel from the get go, it was based on that. You say, if you're doing an, on like a podcast, then you're doing a sit down, you have, your mics and then at least people know from the get-go i'm signing up for content that's more than one hour 
So then people will know. But then if you're doing an average YouTube video, then it's under, and around seven minutes to 15 minutes. Worst case, 15 minutes, that's like your, 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 your breakage. Unless, I don't know, unless you're lucky and you're doing things, but looking at analytics and watch time, out of all the channels that I've been analyzing and then watching and then helping, the average watch time is always seven minutes. And then the concentration mm. is seven in seven minutes so the moment you have that you're able to tell a story in seven minutes and the moment you start continuing you understand that hey man this is what i love and this is how i tell a story because at the end of the day regardless what camera you have what light you have what mic you have you're a storyteller that's what creatives are whether you're telling it through a photo through a video we are storytellers that's what we are at the end of the day so the type of story that you're telling you must tell me in the manner that i'm able to take it and then hold it, and then I, I, I love on when you watch a video, ne? and it has an impact on, and how you measure an impact, it's not the amount of people who share, it's being able to tell another person to say, actually, on Josh's video, I learned about this. And that is the impact that you measure yourself in, mm. to say, hey, it's not about the numbers, it's about the people that are able to say, hey, man, I watched this, this is my takeaway. Do you understand? Mm. So that's the most yeah. important thing about this. You said the very three key things about YouTube. And I'm like, yo, bro, you're speaking my language right now. Do you understand? And you know the last <laughs> point when it comes people always run away from me to say, hey man, like as much as I want to do YouTube, I just want to do it for fun. And regardless whether you do it for fun, that's why I'm so I'm always saying this. I'm forever gonna repeat this. If you're a storyteller, the moment a person reads your story or watches your story, they need to be able to say, this is the keynote. This is what I'm taking away from this story. It, it can be a, like a good thing. Uh, I was telling someone that, hey, you're actually good at explaining on how to set up a hubby. Do you understand? As much as I, I, I don't know hubby, but I, I could understand. It's like, this thing is very interesting. One day I would like to, uh, actually, not to smoke it, but just to set it up. <laughs> in what she was doing like she's so good in setting up a hobby and it doesn't have to be like all the time that's the nice thing about youtube the biggest video on youtube right now is literally i discovered this video this year i don't know why haven't i been watching this video um it's baby shark i'm like oh yeah wait you didn't know about baby shark i watched it this year i was like Ah, no wonder this thing has so many it has like so many views more than people on earth i'm like it makes so much sense why it's like it's got so many views it's because of it doesn't have to say hey man this is what it teaches your basic elements hey there's mommy shark there's baby shark there's that grandma shark and it's like the little elements that people a kid a small kid who's one year uh, one year old they'll be able to take that that's the educational gonna part change of their life yeah a one year old i was like this is this is the one this is like <laughs> the all the award that you should can give man so yeah those are my advice when it comes to growing on youtube yeah. the other thing when it comes to your thumbnails your thumbnails can come after you understand when you're doing a vlog it's like basic things, like these things you can Google. When you're doing a vlog, you need to put like four frames or three pictures and then write vlog on top of it. That's a standard mm. that people do. And then when you're doing podcasts, all you need is just a mic there, a mic there. And then it shows that it's a podcast. And then you put it on a thumbnail. Make sure your thumbnail is on horizontal, 16 by 9. So those are like the technical part of it. But those things are available online. Anyone can Google. So the same thing that don't forget to put on your tags. Don't forget to click the language so that people can understand. If they're watching from China, they'll be able to switch the language and then the subtitles can pop up. So those other technical stuff is something that they can Google. But what they can't Google mm. is the story. That's it. Yeah. Yo, Bongani, you just <laughs> dropped so much wisdom. And I'm just like, <laughs> look, I mean, a lot of what you said now is there were a few things that came to mind, right? And I'm going to try and dissect these things a little bit more from my side. But the first thing that, um, 
that I feel like is super important is going back to that long-term strategy, right? Mm, and you were mentioning exactly. that a lot of the things that you're saying now is like, these are all long-term things, right? And when it comes exactly. to the stuff that's available out there, there's a lot of technical knowledge in terms of how to do these things in terms of tutorials, but yeah. we're not, a lot of people not sharing these like more softer skills where it's not as technical, but it's more strategic, right? Um, and that's ultimately the gap that we're filling here is we educating people on these more soft skills that you don't necessarily find content created out there about. So, and these are like all of these things that Bongani is mentioning is from his experience, like, and it's tried and tested, <laughs> like, so that's super, super valuable. And we are starting out this channel. We are reviewing it as a long-term thing and I'm kind of like we don't have many people on it now but what i know for certain is that when we keep the consistency on this channel when we apply the things that you've said right we're going mm. to be able to see growth because there's value in what's being said here right maybe the delivery yeah. is not where it needs to be but you only learn that stuff once you start and you start adapting and evolving right but the core thing the core thing that comes to it is and i i think of three P's, right? Because when, uh, what I find with a lot of creators is they have the passion, right? So you have the passion exactly. to do, to create, to tell stories, to do all these things. But what we need exactly. to all realize as creators is that we're not just creating for ourselves. We also need to be creating for others. If we want to be able to do it in a sustainable way, and you mentioned sustainable content, and I love exactly. that <laughs> term, bro, because it perfectly describes it. <laughs> if you want to create sustainable content, you need to be able to offer value to someone else other than yourself. And that's where the person comes in. You're putting this content on social media and you're building relationships mm. with people. And that's, and I love that analogy that you gave with the, with the cinema. I mean, those, <laughs> it, it's not a, and like it's transforming your passion into purpose, right? Through people. So, and that's why it's important to not get stuck up on the numbers because that's a whole nother issue with mental health. Like a lot of people get stuck up in the numbers, but it's about the like, purpose that your content um, has and what it does for the people that are watching it. If you have 30 people that are watching your thing, that's a room. That's a room. Every time you put something out, a room of people's lives are impacted through that. And that should encourage you to continue going because that's purpose. Like that's you actually fulfilling a need there. Um, exactly. and then, yeah. And then the other words that come to mind, dude, I've got so many words in my mind and I feel like we're going to make merch. We're going to make merch with all of these quotes and phrases, but the other one is viewer value. You need to be offering value to your viewer. Right. And that's the only way that you get people to watch you because there's so many people putting out content. If you're not offering them value in that first 30 seconds. They've got mm -hmm. another piece of content that is. So your content's going to be replaced very quickly. So all of these things are so, so important when it comes to, to creating attention, right? And gaining attention on these platforms. Because ultimately, that's where the monetary and the business side comes from, right? So I mm. think, Bongani, like, let's touch on one more thing, right? Um, okay. And I did have, I did have uh, one more question that I wanted to ask you. Um, but I think we can combine it with this. So the last okay. question that I was going to ask you was, you guys are doing YouTube Black 2022, right? And you guys yes. are going through a whole bunch of training with the YouTube team. And it's an extremely <laughs> great experience, number one, for networking, which is super important when it comes to growing. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned a little bit about this. Dude, we're going to take all those things you mentioned. We're going to unpack them on this channel. And I'm so keen to do that over the next few months <laughs> because there's yeah. so much value in what you're saying. But... There's so there's the networking aspect and then there's also the technical aspects. And I want to tie this in with the question that I asked earlier in terms of the monetization, right? So my initial yeah. question was going to be, what is one of the most valuable things that you've learned from YouTube Black so far? If you're allowed to mm -hmm. share that, I don't know if you are, if, if you're not, <laughs> that's a hundred percent understandable, but I just wanted to see like, cause I mean, everyone who's watching you, a part of the value that they get from being subscribed to Bongani by following Bongani, consuming your content is all of the knowledge that you have and that you share with people. So I think that's something that could be very valuable to people watching. And then 
I think, I don't know if that tip or that valuable thing that you've learned ties into the monetization aspect, because that was also just the last question mm. that I wanted to ask is how do you get your, because you mentioned sustainable content, a portion of sustainable content is the monetary side, being able to sustain yourself, be able to buy groceries and live a life, right? So how do mm. you... Like, what is your advice in terms of monetizing and in terms of YouTube Black, what is one of the most valuable pieces of information you guys have learned so far in your experience there? All right. So, uh, man, YouTube Black, I think it's one of the most amazing thing ever that has happened to our channel. And uh, it's like, it's like one of those things where I've been looking forward to my, my entire YouTube life when I, when, when the first time I saw YouTube and I've been looking for, you know, when you're looking for support in a way, and then just you try and understand, hey, man, how does this work and all that? So with everything that's been going on with YouTube Black, YouTube Black, initially what they do is that they choose like creative channels that they can uplift and then empower and then just give them guidance on how to like maneuver around their YouTube channel. And one of the biggest things that like that YouTube does is that it gives you funding with all the algorithms and lessons behind it, there's also a business part of it when it comes to the YouTube Black, when they help you in terms of like how to make money of which like it's going to answer your last question when you were asking me how to monetize. So let's get to the basics of YouTube. The first thing that people need to understand is that you start uh, getting money on YouTube when you are on a thousand subscribers and then 40,000 watching minutes. And the moment you have those two boxes ticked, then you start making, uh, what you call, you start making money off YouTube. On average, it's a thousand, uh, a thousand views, you make one dollar. So that's on average. And it, it varies from time to time on how you place your ads and how you let them roll out and then how long is your video. And then also analytics differ from each and every channel. You find that some channels make more money on shorter videos. Some channels make more money on longer videos. So for example, let's take for example, a channel like make G make G a podcast and chill makes more money on longer format. It can make money on shorter format. So it's, it's one of those things when it comes to like channels that you, you, you put out the different type of content. So it's more on also how much are South African advertisers willing to pay to YouTube in order to get their return on investment. So, uh, in terms of that, that's the easy part of it, but. The main thing, the main money on YouTube, on how South Africans make money, is not necessarily based on uh, YouTube. It's called Google AdSense. That's how you like get your money. Besides YouTube, YouTube is a platform to put out that, but Google AdSense is where the financial part of it is in terms of like the number of views, how much are you making, how much are you taxed on it, and then how much is it that you're gonna get paid, and how much is your, uh, what you call, uh, views and then this is equivalent to how much in terms of payment in terms of rents so that's the part that's the first part of it and then the main part where you make money is through advertising on like getting brands to sponsor you so if you get a brand to say hey man josh we like the creators that are there all we want from you is you to place our brand and we just want you to put our and um, let's say our uh, we want you to drink alcohol and put it on the table. So while we're chatting here, you, we're going to have your drinks. We'll send drinks to your guests and we'll also send you drinks for that day. And then we'll pay, pay you X amount for three shows. That's how you make money. That's like the easy part of making money and you get the branded content of it. Or it's your social media. So the nice thing about YouTube is that it needs to be an army. Uh, you don't, you don't just end your content only on YouTube. There's Facebook. As much as people don't like Facebook, mm. but hey, it's a thing. There's like a lot of people, more than, a lot of people are on Facebook, more than YouTube, more than Twitter and all those things. So there's Facebook, there's Instagram, there's Twitter, there's my newly brand new favorite, TikTok, and then there's also LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So all those things, they it's, it's like an army. So the way you put out your content, let's say this video, Josh, you, oh, you want to promote it. You need to have a certain style to promote it on, on Twitter. You need to have a certain style to promote it on Instagram. You have a certain style promoting it on TikTok and the same thing on Facebook. So all these things, it's like an army. They come together, they lead you. Their call to action is this video, the main video on YouTube. 
So all these things, advertisers are willing to pay for you to advertise on those different platforms. So the moment you start like growing them on different skills, and I always like, like to say to people, don't look at one aspect of it. You know, people can say, hey man, I hate Twitter. Twitter, people are always negative on Twitter. Well, tough luck when you're in this kind of creative space, you need to be creative around it. You need to create your own space on Twitter. That's not gonna be toxic. That's not gonna be like defensive to you you need to make a way. Well, people don't like Facebook. Yes, not a lot of people are on Facebook, but tough luck. Facebook has a lot of people as much as you don't like it, but that's where people are. And it's still a platform. It's one of the biggest platforms. That means you need to make use of it to lead people to your channel. So as much as all these things, and one of the best things, like with TikTok, with Defining, we recently started, and then now we're going to 50,000 followers. I'm like, there's people, there's people who are willing, they don't even know that you exist. So the problem is that when it comes to creators is that they think that if, if, if you're big on YouTube, you've made it in life. There's people who don't know mm. about you. The fact that you are there, there's, there's people who don't know what you do. You still have to reintroduce mm. yourself, unfortunately, to most of the people. You still need to be the person who's always like on the scale of growth, growing all the time. So one thing I've learned with YouTube is that now they've introduced YouTube shots and all that. It's being able to take advantage of those small onion things that are growing and being able to be creative mm. around it. Learn on how not to be negative when something new is introduced. No, Bongani, like it's been an absolute pleasure. You've dropped so many gems, man. Like, and you mentioned something now, and this is what we're going to do. And I'm going to use our channel as a testament to show people the impact of what you're talking about, because you, you mentioned now about, I call it content atomization, right? Where you take a large piece of content and then you repurpose it for different platforms. And the reason why you do that is because of this common thread that we keep talking about throughout all of this. And it's offering value to the viewer, right? Some people are not going to be on YouTube. Some people are not going to be on TikTok. Some people are not going to be on Twitter. So you want to offer value to those people by meeting them on the platform of their choice, right? And that offers value through your content. So what we're doing now is, and what we're going to do with a lot of the stuff that you've mentioned is we're going to take that content. We're going to cut it down into smaller pieces, put that out onto different platforms. So if you um, are listening to this and you want to consume content that way, you can go and check out our Instagram. You can go and check out our TikTok. We're going to be putting that content on there. Um, and then like a lot of the other things that you mentioned, the sustainability, the finding and reaching out to brands, all of these things. I think something that also I re resonated with um, in terms of contacting brands, I think something that you really have to touch on is you need to be able to um, have a track record. You can't just create one video and now go and find brands to come onto that video. You need to be able to create a track record to show people you've been doing this for a while, you know what you're talking about, um, and that you have sustainability behind your content. So that's also super important. And that's what we're doing here through keeping consistent and putting this stuff out every Monday at 7 p.m. Create your cast, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. So all of these things, I'm so glad that you mentioned a lot of these things because I feel like we're already applying a lot of them. And I feel like we'll be a testament to what you're saying, Bogani. So I'm very, I'm very keen to, to show people what can be done. Um, and I think, look, I don't want to take up more of your time. You've already shared so much knowledge with us. And I feel like this podcast has been an absolute goldmine. I'm really keen to put it out there and I hope people can actually consume what you're saying and apply it in their lives. And if you're someone who does consume these, these, um, this wisdom and these points that are being mentioned, please like tell us your experience, drop us a comment on this video. When you reach a milestone, send us a DM, go follow Bongani, please Bongani, please give us like, if someone wants to follow you to learn and see what you're up to, please, where do they find you? Okay, so they can find me on all social media. It's Bongani underscore RSA. The only different one is TikTok. It's Bongani underscore official. But on all other platforms, okay. it's Bongani underscore RSA. I do respond. I do respond. Anything on YouTube, anything on photography, videography, I'm there. I will respond to all the questions. 100%. Oh, Thank wait, you so much, also, Bongani. Yeah. So yeah, I let's forgot. go. Please, on YouTube, it's defining on... On, 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 sorry, on TikTok and Instagram is defining media. Please follow, uh, like, comment, everything, do it.
No, we highly appreciate it. Share your story. <laughs> Maybe one day you'll be featured on the channel. You never know. <laughs> but yeah, no, this is, it's been an absolute pleasure, Bongani. Um, if, just to anyone who's watching, if you want to also follow the creator community, the purpose of these podcasts is to educate, motivate, and inspire everyone watching this and to offer a sense of community. And with that community comes opportunity, networking, collaboration, mm. education. Mm. All of these things are integrated into the creator community. So if you're a creator who wants to invest what it takes to reach the status of where Bongani is at, if you want to be able to reach, not even just this, it's not even just about status, it's about impact. If you want to be able to affect a room of a thousand people in a positive way, cement your legacy in life through content, join us in this community. There's multiple ways you can do it. You, whatever platform you look, you watching this on, you'll probably be able to find our link tree and that will give you the links to all of our socials. Um, it's Creatra, C-R-E-A-T-R-E, -E, community, search that ish, join the Discord, join the community and let's help you get to where you want to go. Um, connecting creators to business through content, that's what we do. So Bongani, having said all of that, thank you so much for taking the time to share all this knowledge with us. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure having you and onwards and upwards. Thank you so much. Eh? Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs>